Hey everybody, just going to do a simple water change here on uh, Butterbean's tank tonight, my brackish tank. And what I want to focus on is using my siphon hose to get those clumps of cyanobacteria off the gravel in the bottom. And I've done this before, I've got it on video before, but we're going to go ahead and do it again. Um, this hose right here is the size hose I'm using, and so you can get to some reference. That's my hand, sorry about that, I just banged the tripod. Um, no, you know, gravel vac or anything. We're just going to go straight out of the end. I'm probably going to lose some gravel in the process, but I never worry too much about that. Um, I just, you know, I collect it in the bucket and then I keep it. And at some point down the road, I'll either boil it or I'll soak it in bleach water. And then I'll rinse the gravel out really thoroughly and eventually it'll get returned into the tank. I actually have a little uh, container in the other room that's got some gravel in it that is ready to come back into the tank. From doing this in the past. So there's Butterbean. He probably thinks he's getting some food with me here tinkering with the tank. Um, I'm sorry I can't bring the light any further forward, but I have to open the lid, and if the lid is open, we can't have the light right on the front of the tank. So there you go, and we're probably going to get a serenade from Squeaker. So this has a pretty serious suction. Now some of these clumps are big and obvious like that. But some of them are a little more subtle and down in the gravel and it's a little harder to even tell where they are. And that's why I usually miss some when I do it this way. You would think when I get in here with my treatment it would actually get rid of all of this and it usually does but sometimes I wind up with some left over and I got to get in here and do this uh, from time to time but again to me this is just sort of part of the tank maintenance I also have to be really careful not to accidentally suck up a shrimp or any of my little bumblebee gobies in here they're so tiny uh, it's if I get too close to the siphon it'll suck them right up so I'm also getting any of the old snail shells out of here if I can find them and get them out without too much issue. It's part of me doing maintenance on the tank too. i got to clean up the snail graveyard. And today we're only going to do a 5 gallon water change. My only real intention was to get in there and get those big clumps of cyanobacteria up and off the bottom before they become any more problematic. So I think today we're actually going to take a little extra gravel right off the top just to be on the safe side uh, through the center section because this is where the cyanobacteria seems to thrive and if we skim some of that surface gravel that's contaminated again I'll sterilize it and we'll get it back into the tank uh, in the not too distant future so that's all I'm gonna vac out of the bottom I'm just going to let a couple more moments of water drain here, so I'm ready to full five gallons. I've already got my reservoir set up in the other room. So I'm going to call that good and just say that was the video. I didn't really have any intention of doing a before and after or any big deal about it. I just wanted to get that on video, me uh, using a siphon to back that stuff out of there. That is one way you can deal with, you know issues like that whether it's the green slime cyanobacteria or it's this red stuff that you get in the salt or the brackish tanks um, just use a siphon hose and just remove it from the tank physically now that doesn't mean this tank is now sterilized I haven't removed it from the tank I just got those big colonies those, those massive clumps that were growing they've just been removed and in time it'll start growing back if it gets bad enough I'll have to use a treatment on it again. I have to do that a couple times a year. And then what you just saw, maybe every third or fourth water change, I got to get in there and do a little bit of maintenance like that on it. So again, it's not really that big of a deal for me. I long ago gave up on trying to eradicate that stuff entirely. Don't know why, but no matter what I do, it just comes back. So I've just accepted the fact that it just comes back. And this is part of my normal routine maintenance. Anyway, I just wanted to get that on video. So thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. That way you won't miss anything uh, else I got coming up.
hopefully I'm going to get to do a little tinkering down here with my garden tank tonight. Uh, that is my goal, but I don't know if I'm necessarily going to get to that. So if you're subscribed, you won't miss that or anything else. And of course, don't forget this one here is my brackish tank. So thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you real soon in the next one. All right, I decided not to end the video there. After all, we're going to go ahead and get the rest of the video of me filling the tank back up. Now, I've shown this before, but I'm going to show it again just because I think it's a nice little trick. If you want to fill your tank quickly without pouring your bucket in and, you know, doing it the way where you'd be doing something, you know, like that, you got to go nice and slow because if you dump it in real fast, you're going to wind up stirring up all the gravel in the bottom and you don't want to, you know, leave big bare spots in the bottom of the tank, etc. Well, an easier way to do that, let me adjust the camera here a little bit. An easier way to do that is to just stick the entire container down into the water. And then more or less just turn the container over. And it leaves the water behind. Having a little trouble squeezing it past the uh, light fixture on the top. But you can do it pretty quickly. And if I was pouring five gallons of water into this tank, I'd have to do it pretty slowly to avoid messing the gravel and everything up on the bottom. Just like that, we're pretty much done. I didn't even have enough left in there to get a full container this time. So what I always do is just take the bucket when I'm down to the last little bit and I do go ahead and pour that in. It just makes it easier. So that was it. That was a simple water change on my brackish tank. Five gallons out, five gallons back in. And we're done. I'm not going to mess with the filter. It is a canister filter on this tank. The first time I checked it after being on the tank for a couple of months, uh, it was actually fairly clean. So I didn't worry too much about it and it's only been a couple of months since then. So I'm not going to worry too much about it. I'm going to assume it's probably still okay. So that's what it looks like with the light on the fore section of the tank rather than kind of in the mid and the rear the way I did have it. So now the tank is fully lit again and everybody's nice and happy. So there you go, that was my full water change. Let's see if we can get the butter bean on there a little bit, cruising around the bottom of the tank. So if I didn't say it already, make sure you're subscribed, that way you won't miss anything. You never know what it's going to be with me. And of course you don't want to miss any videos i got here of my brackish tank and good old Butterbean. Everybody loves Butterbean, you don't want to miss him. So thanks again for watching, hope you enjoyed that, and I will see you real soon in the next one.